Today, we will talk about control of renewables and grid integration. Specifically, in this video, you will be able to explain what is a future multi-energy system or MES, describe its dynamic performance, and elaborate on necessary upgrades to operate this system. In the near future, more or less in the year 2050, the future multi-energy system predominantly will be composed of AC and DC technologies, which are applied for integration of different users. For instance, power electronic converters in the grid will constitute interfaces to multiple energy systems like electrolysis for hydrogen, compressed air energy storage, electrical batteries, and so on. Also, the scale aspect, the small scale versus large scale, is significant in the future multi-energy system. The small scale, for example, is like these division systems. Microgrids, we are, are usually metered in kilowatts up to one megawatt. Large scale, on the other hand, is typically metered from megawatt up to gigawatt. Now, let's talk about the dynamic performance of multi-energy system. First, it is necessary to be aware that the dynamic performance is formally investigated by a stability analysis. This refers to the study of the time varying attributes of a power system, which can be judged by studying the dynamic performance of the system under a particular set of conditions and disturbances. Stability, in simple words, is the ability of the system to survive disturbances. That could mean that the system continues perform it at the same operating point, or might be able to reach a different, yet stable, operating point. Let's look at an example in terms of a measured response. For instance, the voltage magnitude. If we solve the power flow calculation, we get a value for the voltage at a certain bus. If the demand and generation do not change with time, you will get a flat response from solving your dynamic models. This means that we are operating around a stable equilibrium point. But if a disturbance happens, it could be a short circuit or a generator outage, then the solution of your differential algebra equations based model would not be a flat line, but actually a dynamic response. If the system returns to the same operating point after this behavior, then the system says to be stable. If something happens, such as topology change, the end operating point might be different than the original one. However, as long as the new operating point is close to the original point, the system can still be called stable. A system is called unstable when it goes into runaway situations, diverging uncontrollably from the original operating point with no way of making return to the stable situation. This is the most basic form of a stability assessment, which is looking at the time response of the variables in your system. There are several holders that this so-called multi-energy system will encounter in the future. One of which is about grid connection requirements, which belong to the dynamic performance. In order to cope with these problems, the control system must be properly designed to comply with predefined technical requirements for grid integration. An example requirement is the characteristic of the primary control of active power frequency, which acts in a time scale of milliseconds to seconds. Another example concerns with reactive power balance voltage control. Let's now visualize the different kinds of controls which can cope with different types of stability phenomena at different time scales. In the figure, there are two main types of controls, voltage controls and frequency controls. In addition, there are ancillary services which deal with restoring a system after a blackout. Now, let's talk about example upgrades of control systems needed for secure operations. Firstly, we discuss on frequency stabilities, new control method. This particular example concerns with grid form and fast active power injection. This emerging method is superimposed on the control structure of the grid side converter with the goal of performing a very fast adjustment of the active power injection for a wind generator. This adjustment is done based on measured deviations of active power, which are passed through a dead band and a second order transfer function. Both functions are tuned on a system dependent basis. The example based on simulations conducted on a test system of a futuristic situation 
of the Great Britain system shows that an increase of wind generation share up to 70% can be feasible, for instance, without having large underfrequency deviations, also known as frequency in Nadir. If grid forming fast active power injection is performed by a set of wind turbines, which can play a minor role in the stabilization of the system frequency. Another example upgrade of control systems needed for secure operation is the control method for transient stability. In this second example, it concerns with synchronizing power angle modulation. This method is superimposed on the fault support control functions of a grid side converter based on measurement relative angle deviations between remaining generators in the system and high shares of renewables, the method helps in reducing the magnitude of the rotor angle swings while supporting a quick decay of these swings. In this way, the disconnection of synchronous generators is prevented, safeguarding the system operation from cascading outages, which can lead to undesirable power disruptions. To wrap up, in this video, we define and classify the notion of power system stability. That means the future multi-energy system. We have also explored on the, the examples of technical requirements and different time scales of the control systems acting on different controllable devices. The dynamic behavior of the future power grid will be radically different. The operators will face unprecedented, highly variable operating conditions and we'll have to cope with the occurrence and coupling of faster dynamic phenomena. Two examples of emerging control methods were presented to illustrate how active and reactive power support can be provided to increase the share of the coupled wind power generation. Two most important research areas at the moment are, first, developing power electronic converters that can help to successfully replace conventional generation, and secondly, developing new control methods that can deal with fast dynamics and coupling of phenomena.